evening everybody and how are we all doing today this is the sunday night live stream from the veg ground podcast this week i want to talk about feeds fertilizers and that sort of thing so i want to find out what feeds fertilizers you use etc etc now i did this last week i wrote out a whole list of notes printed it all out giving me timestamps, etc etc and i printed them off and i've left them indoors in the printer haven't i so uh this is going to be another one that I am running by the seat of my pants again. Fingers crossed it all goes well. Um, let's see if anybody is out there tonight. First of all, Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Uh, Adrian is out there saying hello, Richard. Good evening to you. Bally Cillian Allotment Man is out there saying good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Oh, Kawad Salaman, what about everyone in the Veg Grower Army? And a shout out to my friend Stuart Jackson on the other outlet. This show will be good with all the modern stuff. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Philly SBB is out there. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Chili Phil is out there. Evening from the Chilies. Good evening to the Chilies. Anna Jones is out there saying good evening, Garners. Good evening to you. Nicola Cornish Heaven is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Kate Spratt, good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Um, Stuart is out there saying, Evening, Richard, and a Veg Army. Good evening to you. Ransu is out there giving courgette, broccoli, tomato, and a happy face. Indeed. Uh, evening campers from David Williams. Good evening to you. Uh, Ransu is also saying good evening. Good evening to you. Cold enough for everyone. It certainly has dropped, hasn't it? It certainly has. Money Beats Allotment is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you, buddy. Hope you are well. Um, Digwell is saying howdy doody, planty people. Is that something to do with a TV show from memory? Um, let me know if I've got that right. Uh, Nicola's got the electric blanket on. It's so cold. It really has dropped again. It's meant to get cold again this week, which is annoying because we are officially into spring. It should be warming up. I just want a bit of sun. Saying that, Bally Cillian is saying that it's been a lovely day in Belfast today. Sun shone. You lucky person. Uh, Ian is out there. My dad, good evening to you. Um, I think that is it. Oh, no. Just as I said that, Rebecca is saying good evening, everyone. And Digwell is saying snow is coming. So good evening to everybody. If you are new to this show, please do leave a comment. Let us know you are watching um, and feel free to join in the chat. It's not a, it, we don't want to be clicky. Everybody is welcome. But it is certainly cold. The temperature has dropped and it has been a case of holding off from sowing a load of seeds because of a temperature drop and i've got a hot cup of coffee which i'm just gonna have a quick swig of because last time i drank it when it had gone cold and i want to make sure i get it in time this week so how are we all doing how is everybody's gardens going is everybody been out gardening this weekend we've been doing quite a bit here at veg ground podcast hq this week um got the large veggie pod set up we've got the allotment tidied and almost ready for the growing season so i'm all ready for it but one of the most important things i think when it comes to growing your own vegetables or any plants for that is of course feeding the plants or feeding the soil is what i like to think that we are doing uh, in order to try and make sure that the plants can get the nutrients that they need and that's what i want to talk about today i've got a few of my as you can see by the side the, the feeds and fertilizers that i've rounded out from my cupboard to see what we have birds are still flying around can you hear those birds tweeting away it's lovely lovely uh so quickly back to the comments turbo stream how are you doing buddy actually um i know you were unwell a couple of weeks ago snow forecast this week mind you we normally get a cold and warm march in these parts i'd be very surprised if it does snow especially if it snows here but who knows who knows nicola is saying she hasn't sown any seeds yet that's probably a wise idea uh digwell is saying invest in a thermos flask 
LOL. I've got several thermos flasks, but I never really use them. I should probably do a VegGrow podcast thermos flask. I know we've got some of the thermos mugs on the website um, with our, our, our logo on like that, but I haven't actually got any. I should get one. I, I will get one on my list. Uh, I think this is Stuart, and he says, hope everyone is doing okay. It's just my luck. My cucumbers are up, and the weather is getting colder. Yeah, yeah, cucumbers are um, a little bit a little bit early for cucumbers, I feel. Sorry, being distracted. I've got uh, one of my lights just up here. It keeps flickering, and I'm hoping it's okay because I lost one light with a flickering. Uh, Nicola, been collecting decking joists and paving bricks all day, all full of veg garden, raised beds and pathways. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Rebecca, yes, we're the same time stream. March can be a hard month in the Midlands. Very interesting. Uh, it's, I always think it's interesting how the weather changes across the country. And that's something, actually, that will come up a bit later on. Oracle, on Thursday in Ards Millard, could have pulled her wearing her bikini the the bang weather has the way weather has turned it's been that warm has it uh, been that warm uh bally bally Cillian says speaking okay picture froze i can see the signal is a little bit low tonight fingers crossed that it bounces out of it um just bear with me if that is happening it is a signal for some reason it is just slightly low but sometimes it bounces up again you know, just as it, as we go on. Uh, but listen, I've got a load of seed sowing done today and got my potato bucket prepared. Fantastic. Ian has joined saying hello all. Good evening to you. Now, Stuart is saying my feeds are chicken pellets plus Wilco's tomato feed. That's all I've used over the past couple of years. Um, that's, that, that's a good so. Let's get into it. Let's get into it and discuss a bit about the feeds and fertilizers. Now, I always like to think of it, as I said earlier, about feeding the soil. We're adding those nutrients into the soil so the plants can help themselves to them as they need them. But also we're feeding that life in the soil, the worms, the microbes, etc. etc. So just adding nutrients, it may not quite fit the bill. Um, but what have we got that we will use? So I grab this one here to start off with. I'm just grabbing these as we go. Seaweed extract is one of my favorite feeds for when plants are young, when they are in that seedling stage. It's more of a foliar feed in that plants take it in over through their leaves, but it's good for building strong roots, which is what I think plants need when they are very, very young. Now, added to that, we are st sticking with that tomato feed. Obviously, as the name suggests, it's meant for tomatoes, but really it's for any fruiting plants. And that's used, obviously, to produce fruits. We wait until the flowers are showing, then we start to use that. I've got this slow-releasing um, plant food that I mix in with some of my containers uh, just to slowly add nutrients as we go on. We've got this Westlands Boost uh, liquid plant feed. I'm not sure quite uh, which one it does. So it says the MPK is 6.5, 3.0 and 9.5. Now MPK is uh, what you always look for on the bottom of on on feeds and fertilizers nitrogen phosphorus and potassium each have different functions and the levels of on those in your feeds are how it is going to work so back to the comments quickly because they're coming in thick and th thin uh Tommy stream says i'm okay thanks richard having an ecg tomorrow to try and find the cause of my continued fatigue most precautionary more like a health mot for an old git um how, how's your iron levels? I'm going to ask that because I know when I suffer from fatigue, it was my iron was low. Uh, Nick, get, got potatoes on the windowsill chitting, having trouble keeping my cat off them. It's his sunny windowsill. Oh, two weeks until we plant out our potatoes. So all moving forward anyway. 
Chili Kate says, I've been on a spa weekend in Bath, so I've not been to the plot. I had a great weekend, but really missed working on the allotment. For me, the allotment is a spa weekend, I'll be honest. So, but how did how was your weekend? Was it a good weekend in Bath? Um, it sounds absolutely lovely. Uh, Andrew Norris has joined. Evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Kate Spratt managed to get my sloshed floor down. Was cold, but stayed dry at least. Desperate to get the seed sown. Only done some in inside in the window seal and hydroponics so far. Um, yeah, just hold off for the seeds. It's just slightly too cold for the seeds at the moment. Hopefully, it's going to warm up soon. Nicola says chicken pellets, blood fish and bone and compost, seaweed off the beach into the compost. This is obviously the, the feeds and fertilizers that she uses. So uh, great, great start there. Andrew Noyce. Hello, Anna. Good to be here. Glad to see you. Oh, yeah. uh, Idaho Garden Girls joined. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, Ernie is joined. Good evening, Richard and viewers. Good evening to you. Turbo Stream says, my current method is to mulch the plot when transplanting a handful of chicken pellets into the hole and fish, blood and bones scattered on the infill soil. Um, <laughs> Digwell's making a joke to Stuart. That's cruel, Stuart. Chicken pellets. I use chicken manure pellets, not mashed up chickens. Indeed, indeed. We all know what he meant. We all know what he meant. Um, Kate I says, I use seaweed feed and multi purpose and blood, fish, and bone normally. Interesting, here blood, fish, and bone being used a lot, so that, that's that's very good. Uh, it'll be grim on Tuesday, says Rebecca, indeed, it will. And turbo stream chicken manure pellet, um, all, all, all due to that, that joke. Uh, Kate says, plan on doing comfrey, netting and chicken manure pellets this year. Comfrey and netting is something I want to talk a bit about later on. Let's come back. So we a lot of mentioned about blood, fish and bone, actually. And I have a box of blood, fish and bone right here. MPK 4.0, 7.0, 4.0. So it's high in phosphorus, um, which off the top of my head, I've got this on my notes, tells me that it's good for is it producing flat, producing fruits um i can't quite remember because i left my notes on the ground one thing that annoys me about these and i don't know if anybody else notices this but because it's in cardboard boxes which i think is great you buy them in cardboard boxes it is a solid feed not like the liquid ones that are in the bottles and when you're finished of course the the cardboard boxes can be recycled but i find in a damp shed the boxes tend to disintegrate they get a bit damp and then they lose and all the the cardboard on the inside gets a bit um stuck together and claggy so what i tend to do when i have stuff in boxes let me get a filing cabinet where i keep all my feeds and fertilizers out i put them in these these are juice containers as you can see blood fish and bone this one's empty but the reason i do that is when it comes to feeding, all I've got to do is pop that lid open and shake around like that as I go, which makes it nice and easy and doesn't mean I'm contaminating my hands, uh, keeping them nice, not, not so much nice and clean, but away from like fish, blood and bone, not so much chemicals in them, but you know what I mean? It's not going to do me any harm. I think every gardener will have cuts and braises on their fingers, so... Uh, having something make it a little bit easier just makes it safer for us i believe anyway uh quickly 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 alison o'brien has joined saying i'm feeling much better at the moment glad to hear it uh andrew norris i always make stingy nettle tea for my fertilizer uh stuart is saying this week it's potatoes planting time at school they will be out in buckets and an old drum kit should i be putting any fertilizer in with them Yes, we do have a potato fertilizer. Let me close. Sorry about the banging, everyone. We do have a potato fertilizer. This is it. Organic potato fertilizer. That's what I tend to use for my potatoes as well and seems to do quite well. 
Uh, Muddy Boots says, I use well rotted cow manure to start off the beds. Retains moisture very well. Liquid comfrey and netto as a general purpose for the beds, but use liquid seaweeds on for pot and container grown plants. Now, I said earlier about feeding the soil, and that, that's a key thing that I feel us gardeners should be doing. And that's where compost really comes into play. We don't think of compost being a, a feed or anything, but I see it as being full of those, those nutrients that we add into the soil. The thing is, when we're veg gardeners, when we harvest all these plants, we're taking away a lot of those nutrients with them. A plant takes those nutrients in, and if it, like a take a tree, some of those nutrients, when it sheds its leaves, are in those leaves and falls back into the ground. When we're taking away the harvests, we're often taking away all those nutrients. So vegetable beds really do need replenishing, and that's where composting comes into play, but also these feeds and, and stuff as well. Uh Nicola says, not sure comfrey will be good for me. She's got arsenic in the soil. Now, that's a, a very good point because comfrey is, what's the word? It takes in nutrients from the soil and then you can make a comfrey tea, which is a very good fertilizer. And it's something like a dynamic, a, um, I can't remember. It basically mines nutrients, if you like, in order to, to produce a decent fertilizer. Uh, Anna Jones, I grow, I use grow more granules or liquid on most things and continuous release micro, mi miracle grow in pots of flowers. So the miracle grow is like this all purpose, slow release, all purpose plant food and grow more. We have got some grow more somewhere, I'm just not sure where it is at the moment, but um, it is it is somewhere in here. Uh, Digwell's a uh, good point. I find that blood, fish, and bone can attract rodents, which is obviously said so this stuff here. It's true. It can attract rodents, particularly foxes, I find, because they can smell the blood, they can smell the bone, and they think there's something tasty for them. So they have a tendency to try and dig up all the plants in order to search it out and then get very disappointed. So there is something about it. I'm sure if, I don't know if anybody in the audience is vegan, but vegans certainly wouldn't be using that either. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, David Williams mainly use blood, fish, and bone in buckets for main crop spuds and second early sometimes. Blood, fish, and bone has been talked about a lot tonight. A lot of people are using it. Uh, Turbo Stream, I made some comfrey tea last year and we'll try again this year. I usually forget to feed as I as I water so this year, I need to feed more often now. Actually, turbo stream. At this point, I'm borrowing this off somebody in the audience. The way I am th throwing this phrase out as a way of remembering to, when to feed. Feed it Friday. Now, I'm not taking credit for it. Rebecca, who is in the audience, it's, she's said that phrase to me, and I'm keeping it in my memory banks. Feed it Friday. Now, most plants... Or when when we're in a growing season, we only want to feed every fortnight. So I would do feed it Friday on my allotment one week and then on my veg patch the next week and so on, alternate each week. But that does depend a lot on what we are growing, of course. Um, the, 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 Danny Cillian says, I have three 40-gallon drums at home with my homemade nettle and comfrey and seaweed liquid feed we, we'll get into that um, a little bit later on actually making our own feeds because that's something we do need to discuss uh chili cake my almond shop sells loose so they will fill any container love the milk bottle idea they're juice containers that i use uh, they're, they're not cheap but they do the job and i think being plastic they don't absorb that moisture and they do uh um make life easier and as digwell was also said these boxes they have a stupid little side flap i can't think where it is but it, it spills out if you go too fast or lose control it spills everywhere those little juice containers do make life a lot easier um uh, let's just seeing how we've got lots of comments so let's run through these comments uh david williams use a lot of comfy feed as i have shed fills of it gonna try and do the same for nettles this year not utilize them as of yet 
that's all right. Yeah. Uh, Comfy feeding is popping up a lot tonight. Uh, Lisa from Not Just Green Fingers UK blog. Even though, sorry, I'm a bit late. Hope everyone is well. Thank you for joining us. Hope you are well. Uh, I decant my blood, fish, and bone into jam jars with holes in the lid. Then I can use as a shaker like stalk. A, a salt, stalk, salt. A small box goes a long way. Yeah. This, again, this is why I use those juice containers because they just, they are like your. Um, a, a, a salt shaker just make life a, a bit easier uh brian's garden and polytunnel was joined hello hope you are well uh oracle says stuart don't do that the kids oh, I missed a comment there so we'll, we'll pass that on uh digra i use a very dilute seaweed solution with every watering yeah, I mean, I've started using seaweeds on my young plants. As I said, seaweed is great for building strong roots. And when a plant is young, like seedling stage, that's really what we want. So, yeah, it makes sense to use a very dilute seaweed solution. Let's not forget seaweed mulch, of course, is very well used. Goes down well on the allotment, especially on the asparagus bed. Get distracted with my light flickering. Uh, a little bit annoying, that. Uh, Nicola, all the chicken and duck bedding goes in compost. I also pick up guinea pig bedding every two weeks from a lady, all going in the compost bins. Yeah, I throw all my chicken waste in the compost bin as well for that very reason. Money Boots, I've watered my bean bed with liquid comfrey today. Had a good hot shower for about 15 minutes, and I can still smell the comfrey on my hands now. It is stinky stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, Brian says he favours liquid seaweed. Definitely. Uh, it's one of my favourites. Um, Ballycillian says something similar for feeding supplement Sunday instead of feed it Friday. Supplement Sunday. That might work as well. That's a, a good one. Um, and Nicholas says last time I brought blood, fish and bone, it's been pelleted. So, yeah. Blood, fish, and bone. I've got bone meal right here. Again, what's this one? MPK 40, 4.5 to 16.3. Uh, oh, it's got very little phosphorus in it. So very little indeed. Um, well, anyways, if you're looking to start a comfrey plant supply, beware because it can be invasive. <laughs> to obtain a Bokken 14 because they are sterile. So this feels like a good point to talk about making our own feeds and fertilizers. So yes, compost, probably one of the most regularly used feeds and fertilizers, even though we don't think of it as feed and fertilizer, but it does go. But we can also make a compost tea out of it. So you take a, a load of your compost, pull it into let's say a pillowcase for for argument's sake and then pour that in a bucket of water it'll kill off any of the weeds as well but all those nutrients will then go into the water then you just use a bit of that liquid feed as and when you need it and you can still use the compost in the pillowcase on your beds as well just lost a few of the nutrients and that's very much the same method if you are looking to make your own comfrey which is a dynamic accumulator is the word i was looking for earlier um comfrey is really a good one for using for making feeds and fertilizers most people will have it on their allotment now for that very reason um and you you grow your, your comfrey, which booking 14 is less invasive. I had already had comfrey on my allotment and it just takes over such a big area and it grows and grows and grows that I'm constantly trying to keep it down at the moment or when it starts to grow. But I have got a very big couple of beds of comfrey. And all I do, when I get to about three foot tall, I just cut them down, take that feed, pop them into a pillowcase, pop them in some water, um, uh, leave it for a, a few weeks and there we go we have got a very simple liquid comfrey feed same with nettles cut those down put them in a pillowcase into some water and seaweed very much the same thing too um muddy boots is saying is richard drinking compost tea no i'm drinking coffee and he drink coffee here i'm not a tea drinker myself uh, my wife rejected me using compost pillowcase in the bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I just get some old pillowcases and do exactly that with. 
Uh, Amanda has joined. Evening all. Good evening to you. Um, Oracle is asking, has anyone made seaweed fertilizer? I use seaweed mostly as a mulch, to be honest. I've never made a seaweed fertilizer, um, but I believe it would work. Um, Digwell says mulch it Monday as another phrase to remember. That's a good one, actually. Mulch it Monday. Well, we've got to remember these. Mulch it Monday. Feed it Friday. Supplement Sunday. Um, any other ones like that that can just make little phrases for us all to remember. I'm going to nick mulch it Monday, if I'm honest. Um, Turbo Stream. On a local radio garden phoning, the gardener made a feed from steeping old tea bags in a bucket, I guess similar to comfrey tea, if you don't have comfrey on the plot. I don't know about tea bags. To me, that seems a bit of an expensive way to go and a bit wasteful, but that could work. Weed It Wednesday. Weed It Wednesday. That's a good one. I'm liking these. I'm liking these guys. Uh, Jenny has joined. Hello, everyone. Fashion be late. Sorry. I hope you are well. Hope you are well, too. Rebecca's also come up with Weed It Wednesday. So that's another one. Uh, David Williams, C Cider Saturday. Indeed, that's a, definitely a, a very good one. Ian said, just seen the weather. It looks like Wednesday we may get some sleet or snow down snow, down south. Believe it when I see it. We will see what happens. Uh, Digwell says, make compost tea from the weeds that grow most in your area. It's the one that piles up all the nutrients from down below. That makes sense, actually. So I get a lot of cooch grass on my allotment, which I usually compost. But instead, I could dig those up, pop those into a pillowcase and use it to make uh, bags. Um, I'll make compost tea, weed tea. Yeah, good one, good one. Uh, oh, of course, I've never made it, but would you have to wash it a few times with the sea salt? I don't know about that. Again, when I use it as a mulch on my asparagus, I don't wash it because um, asparagus likes a bit of salt. Uh, Turbo Stream says old tea bags. Okay, um, that, that's where I was going wrong. Turbo stream fish tea, fish for tea Friday. We were meant to have fish for tonight, but I forgot to get it out of the freezer. Uh, Brian's gun and Polly Tunnel says sit down Sunday, a day of rest for me. And Adrian says let's hope there's no snow. Indeed. Um, right, let's have our first video, and this is a video that's coming from the lovely Stuart Jackson. Uh, it's a bit of a tour of his allotment. Afternoon, everybody, or evening. My plot tour for March. Yes, it's Stuart Jackson. So, hellebores and more hellebores. And then my greenhouse and plants ready for the sale in April are getting ready. And then round to the business end. My rhubarb's just coming up. Some celery up. Uh, Parsnip behind it, and the only four ball beans that's lasted the winter that the deers haven't had. Bit of Swiss chard, and then cabbages and onions under the clutch, and then some garlic there, compost bins, and then around and the veggie pods up by the greenhouse. Right, that's me done for March. I will speak to you later. Back to Richard. Yep, back to me indeed here in the studio. Thank you very much for that, Stuart. I've got to say, looks like there's lots actually going on in your garden at the moment. It's certainly, I was impressed with the rhubarb. That certainly looks like it's chugging forward. Um, Rebecca says, slow Sunday. I always try to have five minutes in the garden on Sundays just to appreciate how far I've come. Yeah. I mean, I always think it's important to sit down in the garden or your allotment every now and then and just have a look. With a cup of tea, coffee, it's worth doing. Well, worth doing. Tabo stream. I'm still wanting a scotch pie with onion gravy and a side serving of chips with a Guinness chaser. What well, dig well, green fingers. Oh, don't make me hungry. I've had my dinner. I don't want to be hungry. <laughs> Basin. I wash seaweed, then pot it in a hessian sack. Hang it in a 40 gallon drum of water. Then, what is finished, I top dress the asparagus with the contents of the sack. There we go. There we go. That, that's how he uses seaweed. Basically, pots in a 40 
gallon drum in in a hessian sack and i think just letting everything dry out and the liquid drop through is what he's saying as opposed to using the water i could be wrong let me know are you filling that for oh yeah 40 gallon drum of water yeah yeah with you with you <laughs> oracle says there is too much grass stewart and digwell says cool stewart so there you go I'm looking to make your own fertilizer at school using nettles after we have made soup from the young tips in our forest school lesson next month, Stuart. Says so Stuart. There you go. Make a video. Make a video on it, Stuart. Making fertilizers from nettles. That'd be a good one. Uh, David Williams says, Bargies, trying to get me hungry again, aren't you? You're trying to get me hungry. And you don't says, very nice, Stuart and Tabo Stream. I intend to take a photo from Mark, but only popped down once this week and completely forgot. It looks exactly like it did in February. Like, that's that's all right. I, I did, and I know normally you send me a photo, so um, I realized that obviously with your you being ill, it probably wasn't happening. But yeah, I, I've got to admit, when I took my photo for March and compared it to um, February, apart from being a bit tidier in certain areas, it didn't look much different. But I feel now we're into March. This is when everything's going to start jumping into life. We're going to get a lot of growth, a lot of things happening, and it's just going to make the garden look a lot better. Well, just don't forget to give us a like and a thumbs up, guys, if you are enjoying this live show. Don't forget to follow or click the notification bell so you know when we go live. Uh, Digwell says, following Stuart's lead, I have sold £32 worth of chili plug plants, £14 of super soil and £2 of onion sets for charity, Great Western Air Ambulance. Chuffed to bits. Chuffed to bits. Thanks for the inspiration, Stuart. Fantastic, Digwell. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, please, please keep us posted with how well you get on with that. There's a lot of love. Muddy Bit says, nice one, Steve. Very commendable. Buddy Sin says, brilliant, dig well. Uh, Turbo Stream, if we get any snow, we'll try and get down there and photograph it. Uh, all of a sudden, it'll be Weed City once everything grows, of course. Uh, Oracle says, well done, dig well. Yeah, you know, growing plants for charity, absolutely fantastic. Um and well worth doing. Well worth doing. I th yeah. Um, Rebecca says, brilliant to dig well. And David Williams says, surprising how quickly they take off. So let's come back to feeds. What was that? I'll come back to feeds and fertilizers. As I said, I, I pulled up these ones earlier. I mean, these are cheap ones. They are a slow release feed. Now, I've got to admit, I tend to use a slow release feed in our containers, the veggie pod, our pots, um, things that aren't in contact with the ground and things that the plants are going to take out a lot of the nutrients very, very quickly. A lot of our containers out in our front garden, we, we built the front garden, the edible front garden, or pretty much on the way with it so we've been using slow release fertilizer a lot in there to try and help those plants out so that they can get some feed throughout the growing season it does look pretty well you know with, with how well it's boosted along um jenny says amazing dig well for that one indeed well done dig well you're ahead of me not sold anything yet says Stuart. there we go Perhaps we might do this in the Veg Grower podcast, the veg, the alternative Veg Grower, who can raise the most money for charity. Yeah, we're going to throw that as another category. By the way, on the talk of the alternative Veg Grower show, there is a video and blog post coming out this week with all the categories and details and everything you need to know about that. Of course, we're going to be doing it on our live show, announcing all the winners, and it is completely for bragging rights. But I figured that doing a video and blog post dedicated to it was going to be easier for everybody to try and remember the categories and get involved. So that's coming out later on this week. Um, keep your eye out for that. I'll be on our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and the, at the veggrowerpodcast.co.uk probably be announcements in the podcast etc etc too um digwell says weed city bristol 
Uh, Rebecca says, air ambulance is a great cause. Absolutely. Absolutely. Adrian says, my fertilizers are rotten sheep poo. Now, we were talking, funny enough, about making our own beads and fertilizers. And I believe if you take some manure, again, I've never done this. So it takes, let's say, sheep manure. I don't think it needs to be well rotted either. You can take it fresh, put it in the pillowcase or something and put that in water. Then you can also get a liquid feed from that too. Um, that, that That's an, another good one, isn't it? Another way to try and make more feeds and fertilizers for our plants. Uh, Lisa says, not growing plants for charity is amazing. Well done. How do you do this? eBay or plant sales at home? Um, so to the two that are doing this, let us know how you do it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would love to know. Bally Cillian, I use them slow re release fertilizer pellets in my hanging baskets. It's good stuff. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed it is. Jenny says, I make nettle tea to feed or natural grower, which is organic and amazing. It's like rocket fuel. Now, talking of natural grower, I, I don't know. Is it natural grower I've got down here? I end up with so much of this stuff. Oh, no. This is Dr. Organics um, grass tonic and soil conditioner. I think I had some natural grower stuff somewhere. I've got so many, so many feeds and fertilizers that I've just got to try and use them up this year. Uh, my charity plant sales are at a local village hall along with a coffee shop, says Stuart. So he goes to a local village hall to sell these on. Uh, Digwell says to Rebecca, I also do Royal National RN. Royal Net Institute for the Blind, that's it. Daughter partially sighted. RNL, National Lifeboat Institute, 24 years in the Navy. And I thought the air ambulance was more universal. Uh, Digwell goes on to say, Facebook Marketplace or allotment WhatsApp group for me for where he sells in Le Mans. So there you go. Sell them on a Facebook Marketplace, stand outside your house, or allotment Facebook groups, etc., etc. Plenty of options. Toby Stream says, my one and only use of cow manure was a disaster. I top dressed in October. That patch was absolutely covered in weeds the following summer. Interesting. That is very interesting. Um, again, cows, I always thought that their digestive systems were pretty good. What we've, is it six stomachs or something? Um, however, if there's weeds still left in it, it's obviously not as good as I, I thought. Rebecca says two very good causes, and David says, I use comfrey as a mulch, but find the stalks take a while to break down. A lot of faff, but I think I'll remove them and chop and soak this season. Funny enough, I do the same with my comfrey as well. I use it as a mulch, especially around our tomatoes. Um, but I run over them with a lawnmower where possible as well, a bit like the grass um, mulch. Um just so then it gets chopped up nice and small. And that makes a really, really good mulch around tomatoes. So, yeah. Um, again, as it rots down, of course, it pots that feed into the soil. It might be a bit strong for some, for some plants, but it's certainly something to look at. Uh, Money Boots says, I've got weed with horse manure, but rarely with cow. Yeah, I expected it with horse manure. That's why I now add horse manure to my compost bin for an extra year to make sure it rots down. Um, we get a lot of horse, pe 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 horse manure delivered, but not keen to use because of the amethine poisons, the weed killer that might be in it. You can do a test by growing or sowing some um, broad beans and see if they germinate and what have you. Anymorphids, I think it's pronounced. I'm, it's a word I always struggle with. Um, well, what was I saying? What was I saying? Ah, so what do we use our feeds and fertilizers for? That, that's where I was going with this. So we've mentioned chicken manure pellets a lot. Now, I use chicken manure pellets on our plants that are leafy green. So it could be our cabbages or our lettuces or things that we want to produce a lot of leaf. I find chicken manure leeks are a good one with chicken manure pellets as well. I find that they love chicken manure pellets, so I tend to use that for those. Fruiting plants, obviously, the tomato feed, comfrey feed. 
when they're young the seaweed feed i grow more or blood fish and bones pretty much all my beds to try and boost it potato fertilizer for potatoes i've got a garlic fertilizer as well for garlic onions i tend to try and use the blood fish and bone i find that works really well um but yeah what do you have any feeds and fertilizers that you personally use on particular plants and why share your experience with that jenny kate says i've not made a comfrey tea before but i plan to this year i found a big patch of wild comfrey on the edge of a nearby feed field and i've been told that the leaves can be legally picked um I mean, it, chances are, I don't know on, on that, but if you've been told you can, I would just get it in writing just to be sure. Um, if it's on your, is it on your allotment nearby field? If you've got landowner's permission, you should be okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll stay out of that one is, is, is what I'll say. Um, Digwell says, Amni, no Ami no pyra lids. Um, and yeah, <laughs> trying to help me out there, but I always struggle with it for some reason. Um, I bought two by three meters, two, three, two by three, two or three meters squared. It's doubled in price in two years. Hope to buy less once my new compost bins. I'm talking about horse manure, I think. Um, and Jenny says, I've been reading how brilliant guinea pig and rabbit poo is. Well, they're both cold manures, so they don't actually need rotting down. You can pot them straight onto your beds and they will rot into the grounds too. Um, uh, same with quail as well. As you know, I, I keep quail. I've got one quail left once she's passed away. We're not bothering with a quail again. Um, but that's a cool manure as well. That can go straight onto the plants as well. And things like chicken manure or horse manure, we obviously rot down so that they don't burn our plants. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, it is, so you can pull it straight onto the bed. Oh, yeah. And uh, Muddy Bit says, Llama and Apacapu is good to compost if you can get a supply too. I mean, this conversation about... Um, poop manure it's great if you can get a supply um i used to have a good supply of horse manure but he's packed it up and um, we used to get it delivered to our allotment but it hasn't happened for a while and I'm, i i could do with some but i don't really want to start transporting it around in the back of my vehicles again i want it i'm gonna to have to get it delivered to a site uh if it's on public land then it is foraging oh about the comfrey yeah 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 as i said just make sure you get um permission should you need it anyway just to be on the safe side i have added the link if you want to zap in i've just realized i haven't put the phone number up the phone line is open uh whether it's working or not is another thing but the phone line is open if you do i want to call in skinny jean garner hey hey happy veg grower sunday hello buddy hope you are well uh, Nicola, I buy mushroom compost two loads, each three meter cubic, doubled in price in two years. I hear a lot of good things about mushroom compost. I've never tried mushroom allergy, so I stay away from it. But I am doing, um, what do they call it, straw bale gardening this year. And I'm hoping the straw is, the straw is going to rot down to make a really good compost as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Straw is really cheap. If you can get, if you can grow, if you, straw bale garden works well for me, £3.50 for a bale of straw, it's nothing. It's really, really cheap. Ah, there we go. Nicholas says alpaca poo you can put straight on it as well. So it's another cool weather one. Um, right, another video. We've got a grow along video this time. I think I'm going to share with you, which is this one here. Uh, and this time, it, I think it was Bally Cillian who last week said celery. So that's what I've sown this time. <laughs> Why 
Right, well, hello guys. Time for another Grow Along. As you know, each week on this live show, we're trying to tr grow a few different vegetables and grow them together. So hopefully you are got a collection of seeds that you've been sowing along with us. This week we are sowing the celery. And uh, this was submitted by... Um, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Bally Cillian, if I remember correctly. So celery, good one actually. I've just sent these out this month in this month's um, gift, gift pack for the supporters club. So it's a good one that we can sow this month. It does need to be at a temperature above 15 degrees C to germinate. So because of that, I'm sowing them in my usual green trays and I'm going to keep them indoors for this batch. We're expecting a bit of a cold snap again, so... Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make sure that these are growing indoors. So what I've got is a few seeds. They're very, very small seeds, these ones, which tells me they're not going to need much to cover them over. I'm just going to sprinkle them over the surface like so. And then we'll sprinkle over, give them a bit of a covering. There we go, just a very light covering is all they need. As I say, that will go in our kitchen window seal where it's going to be a little bit warmer. Usually I'll be using my heated propagators, but we're not doing that this year. So, celery is sown, and we'll keep coming back and checking how they get on. Now, you might be wondering what's happened to some of the seeds that we've sown in the past. Um, quick update, peas aren't doing much because they're down here, and I can see that they're not doing much. The leeks that we sowed on the live show, they are germinating and seem to be doing quite well. Um, the basil isn't doing anything as of yet. The, I'm trying to think what else. Did we do spinach on the 12th of the second looking at the label? That might have been a, a live show one. So that is germinating and almost to the point that it's looking like it might need to go outside soon or somewhere for it to grow on. So that's doing okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else we've done. There's so many that it's difficult to keep up with them. And I don't really want to go through all of them each week. So we'll save the rest for when I have a bit of an update as to when they have germinated. Next week, we need another grow along seed. And I am going to suggest, if you guys agree, if, don't, if you don't, make suggestions of what else we might grow. But I'm going to suggest that we sow tomatoes. And I think we should do a few different varieties. It's about that right time for tomatoes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Right, let's get back to the studio. Yes, yeah, so that is the celery sown. This is your chance now to share your celery growing tips. What I'm going to do is let those grow on and hopefully they will germinate, at which point I will prick those out into plug plants and continue to let them grow. Now, I know celery uh, loves, loves, loves a lot of moisture. So um, I'm hoping that we've got to keep them very, very well watered. Um, I've just seen uh, on that note, Digwell says, I don't cover my celery seeds as it needs light to germinate. I literally, I, you couldn't very well see it in that video, but I literally just put a very, very light covering. You could still see the seeds, but it was just to make sure that they are in contact with the soil um, but yeah the celery seeds do need a bit of light it's the biggest trouble is they need a bit of warmth at the moment and we're just not getting just not getting that warmth to germinate a lot of these seeds but we're getting it we're getting it jenny says my celery are just germinating i need to get a trench dug ready now that brings me up yeah when we are growing celery of course this variety that I've used is golden self blanching, so it doesn't need to be blanched, doesn't need to be covered over with more soil as they grow. But if you aren't growing a self blanching variety, you may need to pile up the soil as they grow to blanch them out as well. Um, 
Lisa says, celery is the one plant I don't grow as I think it tastes revolting. I quite like celery, but it's one of those plants that just doesn't excite me, if I'm honest. It's something I often forget about. Um, just They just happen to be there, aren't they, celery? But it is good for bulking out soups and stews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why I want to grow celery. We'll keep trying that going forward. Uh, tomato sounds great for next week, says Stuart. Excellent. Um, but yeah, I find that celery it is a pretty similar to asparagus in that it loves it's a, a marsh plant, if I remember correctly. So it needs a lot of moisture in order to grow and grow successfully. They are something like 90% water. And I remember at school we took a stick of celery, we stuck it in some colored water and watched as the the stalk absorbed all that coloured water up through its stem over the next few days. So celery is an absolutely, um, absolutely desperate, uh, absolutely good one for, for moisture. Kate says, love celery, but despite trying seeds and plugs last year, they all failed. That, that's not surprising, actually. A lot of people do struggle with celery. It is one of those plants, as I said, nobody really gets that excited about celery, but it is one of those plants that a lot of people do struggle to get right. And it is a case that unless you've got a self-blanching, you need to blanch, and they need a lot of water, and I mean a lot of water. Um, so... Those two things are probably what, the, what you've got to remember. Lots and lots and lots of water. Lots of water. As I said, they are a marsh plant. Um, or um, come from the side of come from the side of rivers and things. So they are very, very wet. Bally Soon says, don't like celery on its own, but lovely in soups, etc. Rebecca says. Uh, never been successful with celery yet. Well, we'll keep coming back to I mean, we're going to come back to a lot of these grow alongs. Like every label I've popped down on those seeds, I've labeled as live show. So I know that we then what we've done with that, but we'll keep coming back to them. Uh, aren't calorie a new calorie? Isn't celery a calorie neutral food? It takes more calories to eat than it provides. I believe that's correct. Uh, I'm no scientist, but I have heard that before that it takes more calories to digest celery than than it provides um and it says i've only ever grown self blanching and found it very easy to grow do you have particularly wet soil anna uh that would be my question to that because i think that's where many people get muddled because it is such a moisture loving plant uh hey so great to see you and lovely to see you too uh love that love that uh scott says never grown celery i should do really been in the fence i have tried finland celery before and it's lovely um yeah give it a try i mean i love celery i i it's one of those plants that people don't get excited about but it's so useful in the kitchen that i think it has to be grown david celery nice to dip in a garlic chili type dip yep crudite something like that absolutely and my chili plants are doing well all from the supporters club i will be sowing one packet of seeds each excuse me sorry one packet of seeds each day to try and catch up yeah um it's been a funny year it's been so cold this year that i've held off from sowing a lot of seeds because i don't know where they're going to go um Usually I'll be using my heated propagators and grow lights, but I've held off. I mean, I have got some tomatoes that I sowed in January, which are slowly growing. They're doing okay, but they're being very, very slow. Um, and this is something that's coming out on the podcast in a couple of weeks' time, actually, talking about how temperatures affect the plants. Talking of the podcast, on tomorrow's podcast, I've got this really interesting interview with a lady called Maggie uh stucky i think her name is she's an american author and it's about the container victory garden uh which is a book she's published it's out in america and it comes out in the uk in the middle of april if i remember 
correctly, but I've been sent an advanced copy. I've read the book. It's a really, really good book, especially in a balcony or you can only grow in containers. And it's all about that, that container victory garden mentality. Full of some interesting insights into how people grew victory gardens during, uh, during the, the World War II period. Um, really some interesting stories on that. Pony are just frozen again, but as long as sound is okay, it's the signal that I can see it is low and it's stayed low all night, even though the the, the, the box is in its same place. Um, Digwell says it's better like this when I'm frozen. I'm not exactly showing anything, so it, it probably works. As long as the audio is coming through fine, then that is all well and good. Um, now, celery, what feed would you use to feed your celery plants on that note? Obviously, compost might be a good one. And I would probably just use chicken with your pellets. But what do you guys think? What would you use to feed your celery? Um, uh, Nigel says, try soaking the seeds overnight in water in the fridge and sow on compost with a very fine covering of vermiculite. I think I was talking about celery. Yeah. Um, as Digwell said, it's a very, and I tried to, you couldn't very well see it. It's a very fine sprinkling just to literally keep those seeds in contact with the soil, still let a bit of light through because they do need a bit of light to germinate. Um, they are a tricky one. I grant you that celery is probably up there with cauliflowers as one of the hardest vegetables to grow. Uh, Money Boots says I use liquid nettle tea for celery plants. So that would be seaweed feed, actually, thinking about it, wouldn't it? Seaweed feed would work for, for celery as well. So liquid nettle feed, nettle tea, even, for celery plants. Um, uh, Kate says thank you to Money Boots. Yeah, nettle tea. Um, seaweed feed uh, or chicken manure pellets are the three I would look at for your celery plants. It does get confusing, all these feeds that you have to use for different plants, doesn't it? But there must be an easy way of remembering it. Jenny says, I add an old veg peelings, etc., to right in the ground ready, then fresh compost on top and plant. I do have chicken manure, but again, I love natural grower. Keep the celery damp and it's happy. Yeah. As I said earlier, celery absolutely loves uh, a lot of moisture. Absolutely loves moisture. So um, keep it damp. Keep it very, very damp. Keep it well fed with all the, 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 the stuff that we are talking about. Um, and hopefully you will go well. I remember hearing... That somebody grew celery, the same bit of celery for about two years. It got a bit woody in the middle, he said, but he managed to grow it for two years. Um, I, I wouldn't like to do it to that extent, but I know when I've grown my celery, I'm not saying we've got amazing celery when I've grown it, but the celery has been good enough. And I do find that the key, I, I figured the key out to be, is just keeping it really really damp keeping that celery damp don't let it dry out at all and then this comes back to what i've often said on the podcast uh, often when it comes to working out how to grow plants best we've got to figure out where the plants come from where they originate from and what conditions they grow in in order to get what's best for them so rhubarb is actually a really good example as is celery in this rhubarb comes from um uh, it, it, well it's broad leafed so it comes from forests it's a shade loving plant it comes actually from siberia so it can also do quite well in a cool which is why rhubarb often pots a uh, shoot up it starts to flower in the summer but if because it comes from the cool area and shaded area it does do okay in the shade but it does better in full sun. But you've just got to remember, again, to keep those roots really, really moist. Really moist. Really moist. Easier said than done. But again, this is about mulching, uh, plenty of compost, watering regularly, and so on, so on. 
feeding regularly. All these things that <laughs> uh, that we do. And Nicholas says, Charles Dowden just uses his compost once a year in on beds in autumn mostly. Is that for feeding? He just uses compost, is that, Nicola? He doesn't actually use any feed. Makes sense. It does make sense if you are able to produce enough compost. I think it's what we've got to remember is about producing enough compost at all times in order to try and, and tackle this. Jenny says, I bet celery would like a hugel culture bed. I'm not so sure. I mean, I've got a hugel culture bed that I'm trying out on the allotment. Um, Will it stay damp is not what I experienced because it's a raised bed. I'm sure there's plenty of moisture wicking up through, but would it work? We'll find out, we'll find out this year, really, really. David says, um, rhubarb grows from custard, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, on that phone, just filming a rhubarb and custard video. Oh, I'm looking at my rhubarb at the moment. I think, was it in Stuart's video as well? And the rhubarb really is springing into life. So I'm getting all excited. I lifted up my bin on my forced rhubarb and it's barely doing anything yet. Hopefully in the next few weeks, that forced rhubarb is going to spring into life and we're going to get those long, tasty, thick, pink, uh, sweet tasting stems from rhubarb, which is um, going to be so, so, so tasty. So tasty. So tasty. Uh, what fertilizer should I use for my bay tree? It's a young plant in a 30 centimeters pot. Thanks, team, says Stuart. So bay tree, again, we're looking for green leaves. So I would do chicken chicken manure pellets. Um, that's what I tend to use on mine. Maybe a bit of uh, blood fish and bone or bone meal as well, just to help the roots out. Um, 30, 30 centimetres pot might need a bit of a bigger pot as well. Um, but, yeah. That's that's what I would look at. Uh, Nicholas says just his compost. Charles Down just uses compost, doesn't use feeds. I, I mean, he's able to produce enough compost on his a lot on his garden to feed his entire farm. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Money Boots says, for starter celery, try growing a self-blanching variety. That's why we've uh, sent out the self-blanching variety in this month's gift pack you know, for the supporters club. Self-blanching, it just makes life easier as well, going for the self-blanching. So this one was a golden, golden self-blanching, it's called, which is a beautiful golden stem celery. Uh, again, I'm not a lover of trying to... Uh, mulch these things up at times because it just adds more work it just adds more work so self-blanching makes life easier but if you haven't got self-blanching what you have to then do is as i said either add compost or cardboard tubes around it to try and blanch it same as leeks actually for that matter you got to try and blanch your leeks in order to try and get that nice white stem again something i never bother with but probably should do i'm quite happy with the green stems but but it, Maybe it's something we'll look at. Nicholas says, I'm going to try growing celery in a container with a large water reservoir so it can draw on the water constantly. Yeah, I think that's what it needs. I'm thinking about it. It'll probably work quite well in the veggie pot, actually, if it's well watered. Uh, Thomas, I need to use up my frozen rhubarb soon to make way for this year's that is showing through. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to need a lot of rhubarb recipes this year, to be honest. Every year I grow more than enough rhubarb for my needs. I'm going to be actually giving away some rhubarb, thinking about it. But, um, yeah, uh, rhubarb recipes. I made rhubarb cordial, which is really nice. Rhubarb, um, what do you call it? Rhubarb sorbet, really nice as well. Uh, loads, loads of lo rhubarb jam was nice. Lots of things that we can use for rhubarb. Uh, Ian says seaweed extract is great to pot on runner beans when you get them planted, as mine sometimes need a boost to get them going. Never thought about that, but that makes sense. Again, seaweed I know is good for promoting strong roots, so that would make a lot of sense in to use it in your um, when you're planting out things, just to get that going, going. 
Digwell says, Charles Downey lives in a whole different world to the rest of us in the growing community. He is a market gardener with resources beyond us. Great ideas, though. I think you are you are right. He, you know, he's 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 growing. He buys in. Or I think he buys in or gets hold of a lot of manure to boost his compost making up. So he has these resources available, which aren't so easily available for many of us. I agree. Yeah, but it also shows it can be done if you if you can do it. Rhubarb and puff pastry, brown sugar is made. And oh, you're making me hungry again, guys. Uh, I watched Charles Down in videos where he said trop dress beds with th three centimeters of compost or manure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Money Rick says, I always dig a trench in a celery bed and line with cow manure before planting out. There we go. This is what I want to find out. I think, I think moving forward, what we're going to do when we go on with the grow alongs, we're going to, I'm going to see sow the seeds and talk about talk about them but throw it out to you guys watching to throw in your tips as well so like next week will be tomatoes uh when we come back to the studio after the video throw out your tips for growing tomatoes as well um just make it a bit more interactive uh for the last three years says lisa i've just used compost like charles dowding but i can only make enough compost for my half for half my plot and have to buy lots in this year i'm using my compost on half and, and blood fish and bone on the other half and next year i'll do the opposite half with compost i'm with you on that i've just had to buy in 400 liters of compost for my veggie pod and that was a lot of compost 400 liters i actually need a bit more but it just goes to show you know unless you can i can never produce enough compost i always need so much of it and i compost a lot and I'm up in constantly trying to up how much composting we do. But yeah, definitely, definitely something that we can do there. Nicholas says some people put clay or water pipes around celery to blanch them. Yep, that's another way to do it. Definitely. And Scott says a nice recipe for rhubarb I have done before is rhubarb achar, Indian pickle, Scott. Send that recipe to me, please. Richard at vegrowerpodcast.co.uk. Um, I would love to hear, I'd uh, love to try that recipe out. Uh, right, one more video for you guys. And this is the photo video. Well, welcome back to another collection of photos that have been sent in by you. First up, look at Rebecca's smile in this photo. Really pleased with her onions quite clearly, as well as her sweet peas, as you can see here. Lots going on inside her greenhouse is my guess, but added to that, she's got lots going on outside. Look at this garden. Just looks absolutely brilliant and uh, nice and tidy. Everything's looking great. I'm really quite envious of her garden here. Next, Philly and Barony have got a frog in their uh, pond, as well as frog spot, of course. And a rhubarb is springing into life, which I'm sure we're seeing all over the place. And we have got uh, a few seedlings also doing well. This is possibly onions or leeks, I'm not sure. But these look to be onions as well. Off to a great start. Next, Kate has been laying down the foundations for her new shed that she's getting. And this is John's dog down on his allotment, giving him a hand. One for the dog lovers out there. Now, Stuart has been busy sowing seeds in his greenhouse. As you can see, cucumbers here are started. Dahlias are also growing well in his little uh, paper root toilet tra trays. As well as this large collection of seedlings also doing great. How does he find the time? Next, Jenny has been busy getting her garden ready for the growing season. Also, that's really good as well. You can tell she's been very, very busy. Lots of compost come down, lots of tidying. Just looking great, isn't it? And I, I, I'm, I'm really, again, quite envious of everything that is going on in these gardens. I've seen no dig being used as well. Fantastic. Now, next, this is the Chili's plot for their plot photo for the month. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? And finally, Digwell sent in this photo of his plot too. Looks great, doesn't it? So please do keep sending your photos in. Post them to our Facebook group, send to me via social media or email me. 
What a fantastic load of photos. Thank you so much to everybody that sends them in. Absolutely love seeing them. And uh, I think everyone else really enjoys seeing what everyone is doing. Um, now, uh, as you know, each week I like to set you guys a bit of a mission. And I'm trying to stick with something that you can send in via photos or what have you. So what I thought I'd do this week is I want to see the signs of spring that is going on in your garden or allotment. So, for example, we've seen in a couple of those pictures that rhubarb is starting to spring into life. I've also been on my allotment. I've seen some of my fruit trees that are starting to bud and even putting on the leaf. So I'd like to see that sort of thing this week. If you can go out to your garden, your allotment, take a few photos, send them in, that would be great for this following mission. Um, I will try and remember to put this up in the group so everybody can uh, get an idea of each week what we are doing. It's not always, as you can imagine, I always forget sometimes or busy when I finish these things that everything takes time. But yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Digwell says, mission, bring it on. Yeah, I thought it was a great, a good mission, actually, I thought. Uh, he also did say, I saw this just while that was going on. I was not being derogatory about Charles Down comment. I know you wasn't being derogatory. I think they, we've always got to temper what people say with their reality and our reality. I'm not saying that that's, Charles Down is wrong at all. I, I've got a lot of time for Charles Downing. Um but if you if you want to do like he does and not use any feeds or fertilizers, you've got to get the extra compost in or an ability to get compost, horse manure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in in order to live like that. Uh, Nicholas says Charles Dowden buys in wood chip and mushroom compost, which he uses to make compost. This is exactly it. You've got to he's buying in this wood chip. This is my I think the point that we we, we I was making and Digwell's making is that he. You've got to spend a bit to get more. Uh, what else have we got? They, Digwell made a good point, Steve. And like Nicholas says, he buys in a lot of his ingredients as well. Uh, he's a market farmer. It's a business. So, you know, he's doing the best that he can. But he wants, at the same point, he's got to make profit. He's got to make profit. Uh, great photos, says Rebecca. Looks like everyone's busy out there. David says, great pics, indeed. Uh, great photos, says Tybo Stream. And uh, there we go. And Scott says, ingredients, one, one and three quarters cup of rhubarb chopped into half inch pieces from, from stalks, four cloves of garlic, half a teaspoon of chili powder. I used a really hot one. Use paprika instead if you want a mild one green chili, half a teaspoon. Basically, it's a recipe up there. Um, it's cut off at the end. It's a bit too long for a comment, Scott, but I'm going to try that because that sounds absolutely delicious. Digwell says, spring has sprung on my plot. It really has started, hasn't it? As I said, it's really kicking in, but I want to see the signs. Jenny, sorry, guys, I've got a dash. Thanks for showing the photos. Everyone has been working so hard on the plots and look great. Take care, everyone. Indeed, indeed um yeah yeah this has been a interesting chat again and i think a lot of people have had to dash off towards the end um but you know what this has been a, a good chat about feeds and fertilizers and i do think we what we were saying about um compost i do think compost is probably the best feed or fertilizer if you can get hold of it um or produce enough of it it's not so easy to produce but you've got to be able to produce enough compost so as not to use feeds and that isn't easy i compost absolutely everything i possibly can be it i don't know um a food food from our kitchen everything that can be compostable i try and compost i can never produce enough I will try. I will keep trying to produce enough. And the only other option I've got is to import things like manure or uh, wood chip, which isn't really what I want to do, but it may have to happen. Uh, David says, spring has ru rusted on my plot and come back to winter. And we're doing all right. We're doing all right here. I think 
it has turned cold, but I think it's just a minor, <coughs> minor breakdown. Um, he sells £15,000 worth of beds. He says he breaks even with the wages he pays the guy that works for him full time. This is exactly my point that I was trying to make. It's a business he needs to make money from. I mean, 15 k from all the veg, that's not, that's just over minimum wage. And that doesn't include the input. So it's not much money in it, is it? It's not much money. So 15 k barely... 15k is unless that's 15k profit but even then that's not much money at all um again never really uh gone into the 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 the, the economics of being a market gardener or anything i'm not really inter interested in that because i grow food for us to eat and if i have any extra i will give that away to friends families etc etc but yeah 15 15 000 pounds worth of food is or oh, fifteen thousand pounds worth of food is not much at all. Um, despite, I mean, we've been having this conversation a lot lately. The the price of food at the moment, and what with tomatoes and peppers and things like that being rationed in supermarkets. I don't know if anybody else has been following this news, but I've learned a lot about it lately because I've learned that supermarkets they tend to buy vegetables at a set price so that they can sell them for a set price what i mean by that if they want to sell five tomatoes for a pound that's the price they set in other countries particularly france and um spain and italy the price is much closer related to the market price that they sell so if the market price dictates a bit like petrol in this company market price goes up the price on to the the the, the the uh, customer goes up uh, if it goes down it goes down as well um, which i think is a bit of a fairer system to be honest with you uh, i think that's much fairer all round to everybody involved the, the the farmers get a better price the or a fairer price i should say um and we get a better price i think i think and that's also probably why in soup in in if anybody's been to a french supermarket the food always or the vegetables certainly always look so much fresher and better than what we have in our supermarkets i don't know if anybody else has been following that news lately but it's certainly something that has popped up on my radar i mean it's been interesting learning all this um, i think so anyway i think so anyway um nicola depending on which finance site you read it varies from 45 to 95 profit per annum oh yeah talking about charles yeah yeah who knows who knows and that's not the point that's not the point you know he's from the main thing i take away from charles is he's promoting a better way to grow food using no dig um that makes it better for the soil and much nicer to the soil oh, excuse me um yeah yeah right we i've got about 10 minutes to go so if anybody has any questions or anything they would want to know about feeds and fertilizers this is a chance to throw it out there and see what we can answer um as a group as we come towards the end of this show now next week i am going to or i want to do a podcast funny enough i'm not a podcast sorry um next week's subject is something that we have been discussing quite a bit lately composts i want to discuss what composts you use what what you buy them from what you're prepared to pay um that sort of thing you know we've spoken a lot that peat free compost isn't as good as peat based compost for various reasons but we have got to move on with the times uh coir compost is another one that there's a lot of debate about um is it maize that they use in other composts it's saying i want to find out what compost you use what you prefer your own homemade compost how do you produce a lot of it 
let us know what uh, next week on that. Now, Scott says, definitely supermarkets not paying a fair price. I'm not having any issues buying tomatoes, etc. in for work. We use local suppliers that import but pay a fair price for them. I'm taking, I'm guessing, Scott, you're a chef of some description to be able to, for, from what you're saying. But yeah, this is exactly our point as well. I think buying them at a fairer price, supermarkets, I mean, my my industry i used to do supermarket refrigeration and the supermarkets dictated the price that we would charge them to repair their their equipment that's what's how supermarkets work um that is that is where i feel supermarkets are letting everybody down and that's that's it that's the problem that's the problem uh david says to be honest it's probably more viable to pay 40 pound for a ton of hm that's eight then eight bags of compost hm horse manure horse manure sorry 40 pound a ton um horse manure yeah a 40 pound a ton i was looking at compost this week and we're near 100 pound a ton for compost so trying to get it in digwell says uk supermarket purchase system is good for suppliers at times of excess as the price stays as negotiated but this is bad for suppliers in times of shortage a unique system in europe uh, yeah absolutely agree with that i mean i i still like going to farmers markets or markets um and paying a fairer price but that's not so easy to do for everyone is it it's it's one they often are open at times when most people are at work you need them open in the evenings i say um supermarkets always open pretty much so they've got the selling thing there um but yeah keeping the price dictating the price is where the problem comes in uh, David said, don't know if that's a price mine, just a rough guess. I can't remember. I don't know how much horse manure is anymore, so I've got to find out. Uh, so Stuart says, the big four supermarkets will not pay the cost of fresh veg. So some of the wholesalers are not prepared to sell at a loss. In Spain, they are paying the fair prices, Stuart. Yeah, absolutely right. There's a Somebody posted an article in the group the other day about it as well. Was it Scott actually thinking about it? I can't remember. But it was a really interesting article about the economics of, of what's going on. And it's also issues like a supermarket would reject a, a, a lorry load of vegetables for whatever reason, for not being to standard, but they would reject it when they got it. And by the time it got back, it would only be useful for compost. And it could be for ridiculous reasons, such as there's a bit of a mark on the box. The food, the veg was absolutely fine. So a lot of issues going on there that isn't as black and white as first made out. But gives you a lot to think about, doesn't it? Uh, Turbo Stream says, my local farm shop is about 10 miles away. Not really viable for me to shop there. I, I get what you're saying, and I do agree with you. 10 miles is quite a distance. Um, again, this comes back to what I said. and it's, I feel it's the same with butchers or greengrocers. I was having this conversation with my wife earlier. They're open, usually open quite early in the morning. Well, who's going to buy their, their meat or their fruit and veg in the morning when they're on their way to work they're probably going to buy it on their way home from work by which point most of these places are closed i feel if they stayed open eight o'clock in the evening they would probably get a bit more um sales in my opinion uh we got to start buying seasonal this would solve a lot of the problems says so stuart i do agree do agree with that but people don't want to supermarkets are just feeding into what people want <coughs> the only way that would happen is if everybody stopped buying out of season chili cake just packing our odd box what's odd box uh, they're expecting an abundance of tomatoes peppers and cucumbers that the supermarkets won't pay for crazy what's odd box um i've never heard of that is that a bit similar to like our community fridge that we have um 
Digwell says similar here, Adrian, and I live in the country. Yeah, 10 miles to a to a farm shop. Oh, we've got a few farm shops nearby, but they they're not as close as a supermarket. But like I, I would say, <coughs> excuse me, I will come back to the fact that these these supermarkets are led by what people were buying. And if we were to buy from farm shops more, it would make them more profitable and lead to us. Um, I'm still intrigued with what other boxes, uh, Tiddy Kate. Uh, not heard of that one. So that would be great to find out. Especially, as I said, if it's what I think it is from your description, uh, here we go. Sorry, Oddbox distribute excess stock that would otherwise be waste. That's what I thought it was, a bit similar to our community fridge that we have. Um, I, I'm going to check that one out when I finish this show and find out and sign up if we can. Um, but, yeah, it, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad that this food can go to waste. Yet there's people begging for it in the supermarkets and what have you. Uh, I've also read that this has led to more and more people growing their own tomatoes or buying tomato seeds and plug plants in order to grow their own tomatoes, which, don't get me wrong, I think that's great that they're going to be growing their own food. But the trouble with that is they are doing that at the wrong time. By the time that those plants are producing tomatoes, tomatoes will be in plenty of supply. So um, there, there's a lot, lot, of, lot of issues with that. Uh, Chili Kate says, you do have to pay, but it's more ethical. I'm going to look into it. I will look into it. Uh, time of stream, only two supermarkets within walking distance. The local corner shop only sells tins and cheap processed food alongside cheap beer yeah yeah I'd... and this is a this is a very political subject but it's something that we could get into uh best veg do i can recommend is veg boxes at little one pound fifty for a box of for a big box of fruit and veg worth 15 to 20 pounds find them after the tills so look at them before you go into the store I've never seen them so i'll keep an eye out for those um I, but yeah, I mean, again, it, it's interesting. Uh, there are farm company, says Alison. I think hopefully there's more to that message. Hopefully, we're going to get that in a second. The one thing about the bed shortage is the supporters club may start growing, says Stuart. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um, we'll keep a close eye on it. Uh, Alison says there are farm shops that deliver, yeah. Of course there is. That would be the way to do it. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Clarkson's Farm recently, the series two, uh, well, series one and two. Really an eye-opener for how difficult it is for farmers. But I've always, always said that, and it's something I'm uh, keen to try and keep going. Yeah. Right. I think we are just about at the end of this week's show. Um, we will be back again next Sunday at 6 p.m. where we're going to discuss composting and particularly, as I said earlier, all the things that we have discussed today, uh, where you're getting compost from, how much you're prepared to pay, et cetera, et cetera, that sort of discussion. Um, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and click the notifications so that you know when we go live. Your homework, if you need a reminder, is that uh, to share any of the signs of spring. And next week, the grow along will be tomatoes. I'm probably going to sow quite a few tomatoes next week, so be prepared for that. Uh, right, and um, as I say that, we'll get ready to get rid of that. There we go. Right, guys, uh, been great as always. You take care, and I'll speak to you again next time.